Now, let's get into the really interesting part. This is where a lot of the development comes into play. How do you get dorsal ventral patterning of the neural tube? Because in the more dorsal side of your neural tube, this is where most of your sensory neurons develop. These are the sensory neurons that are going to synapse with your temperature and your pain receptors and all of these various receptors that receive information from the periphery of your body. In the more ventral region of your neural tube, this is where your motor neurons are going to develop. The motor neurons are what going, are what going to cause and affect certain things in your organs and your muscles and whatnot. So the synapse between the, this is kind of two junctions. These are going to receive the sensory information, integrate with your brain, and then send through the motor neurons, so the ventral part of your spinal column, to the various tissues of your body. There's two main divisions of this. So in development, we ask the question, what are the factors that causes this part of the spinal column to develop sensory neurons and this part of the spinal column to develop motor neurons? Well, it comes down to two main signaling centers. Down here, this tissue right here is not neural tissue. This is called the notochord. Now, we haven't talked about the notochord yet specifically, but it doesn't come from the ectoderm. It comes from the mesoderm. We call it cortomesoderm. So it's a derivative of the mesoderm. Okay, so even though this ectoderm invaginates and becomes right next to where all the mesoderm forms, the neural tube originates from the ectoderm. This region right here, the notochord, originates from the mesoderm. It's a signaling center. One of the main signals that comes from this cortomesoderm or this notochord is sonic hedgehog. So what happens is sonic hedgehog starts being secreted in a morphogen gradient. High concentrations of sonic hedgehog then induce this most ventral region of the neural tube to become a new signaling center. So in fact, this starts secreting sonic hedgehog in a morphogen-like gradient. So what you end up getting is high levels of sonic hedgehog in the most ventral neural tube, and then it'll start dissipating as it goes more dorsal. On the other end, the ectoderm that overlies the neural tube in the dorsal part will start secreting TGF-beta um, family proteins, one of those being bone morphogenic proteins, or BMPs. So BMPs get our signal from here. That creates a new signaling center here in the most dorsal part of the neural tube. And in similar fashion, you get a high gradient of BMPs to a low gradient from the dorsal to the ventral. So what eventually starts happening is this. You get high levels of BMP here to low levels, and then high levels of sonic hedgehog ventrally to low levels. And the overlap of these two major morphogen gradients creates different types of neurons. You get certain types of sensory neurons here, different types of sensory neurons here, and so on and so forth. It turns on very specific genes depending upon the morphogen gradient. So here in the most ventral region, you get some genes turned on. As the gradient starts getting less and less, you get other genes being turned on. And that's what creates these different levels of sensory neurons all the way down to motor neurons from the dorsal to the ventral. So the main, tar uh, main vent dorsal ventral patterning is BMPs in the dorsal region, sonic hedgehog in the ventral region. That's what creates the dorsal ventral axes of the neural tube. So this just kind of shows thresholds of sonic hedgehog and how different thresholds can turn on different genes. At low levels, it, blo uh, it blocks PAC7, so PAC7 can only be expressed down to here, and so on and so forth. You can see how the morphogen gradient will cause different proteins to be turned on at different levels, just like we talked about before. That's, it's all about the morphogen gradient. This is just kind of a fluorescent overlay of the patterning of nuclei of different genes that are turned on. I mean, it just kind of shows you a rainbow pattern of various genes that are overlapping and, and going from the dorsal to the ventral region. Here's the notochord. So this is where sonic hedgehog is being secreted and then being induced. This is where these nuclei right here are motor neurons. I know that because Gained enough motor neurons in my lifetime from multiple people. And then um, you get the dorsal region here where a lot of the sensory neurons are going to start forming. Uh, they've shown that if you do a transplantation experiment where you take a, a chunk of notochord and you put it over here, it'll actually create a new signaling center, and you won't get um, sensory neurons here. You'll get motor neurons starting to form here. So you can, this tissue is competent to be able to respond to a new inductive uh, signal from uh, a new signaling center. So if you do take this and put it over here, it can override the 
BMP signaling and cause the dorsal neural tube start differentiating into motor neurons instead, really screw it up. Now, here's one of the fascinating things about the neural tube. When you look at a cross-section of the early neural tube, it actually looks like there are multiple layers of cells, when in reality, it starts off as one cell thick. So the question becomes, this looks like it's got, you know, five or six layers of cells already, but in reality, it's just one cell thick all the way through. So the question becomes, what, what's the discrepancy here? Why does it look like it's so thick when in reality it's just all these individual cells that are forming the initial stages of the neural tube? Well, the fact of the matter comes, and this is a weird thing, the cells, the nuclei, are not all lined up. They're one cell thick, but you can see that the cells stretch from one side to the other and the main body of the cell actually migrates along the, the, you know, along the tube, along the neural tube. So this looks like it's really thick that it's got all these different cells. Nope, it's just one cell thick. It's just that the cells are stretched out and the nuclei, or the main part where the nucleus is at, actually migrates back and forth. It's kind of crazy. So here's the lumen. This is the middle part of the neural tube. The lumen the cells will go outward and then come back, and then they'll actually undergo cell division right here at the lumen of the neural tube, where one of the cells will remain a stem cell, and the other one will then take on a particular fate. If it's in the dorsal neural tube, it'll start to become a sensory neuron. If it's in the ventral neural tube, it'll start to become a motor neuron. And this is how the neural tube starts getting bigger and bigger, is that as mitosis occurs, each subsequent cell division causes um, uh, you know, a new layer to form, but the stem cells just keep moving back and forth in their nucleus. They keep moving back and forth. Every time they reach the lumen, they get signals to undergo mitosis. They split, and then it, go, it goes through the same process all over again. And so what's interesting about this process is the cells that are born, meaning they undergo mitosis early, the nuclei of those cells tend to stay right here near the lumen of the neural tube. The cells that are born a little bit later, their nuclei tend to start going in the middle region, which we call the mantle. And then the cells that are born the latest tend to go more towards the outer region, so, and as far as their nucleus. And so this is what creates these different layers, is when the cells undergo their mitosis. Early dividing cells stay right here near the lumen. Later dividing cells start moving out, and then the latest dividing cells move out even further. Well, this creates three main areas that form your spinal column. You've got what we call the ventricular zone, which is right next to the lumen or the middle part of the neural tube. You've got the intermediate zone, which sometimes we call the mantle zone. And then you've got the marginal zone, which is the outer layer. So what does that have to do with the ultimate formation of your spinal column? Well, let's look at it. This is what a not fully mature spinal column looks like. This is what your spinal column looks like. But this is where it's getting to that point where it's almost fully mature. So let's look at these three layers. Let's look at the ventricular zone, which is right next to it, the mantle zone, which is right next to that, and then the marginal zone. The nuclei, most of the nuclei of your spinal column are in the ventricular zone and the mantle zone. That's what we call gray matter. So the gray matter of your brain and of your spinal column is gray because it's unmyelinated, meaning it doesn't have these Schwann cells which surround the axons of nuclei and therefore the cells appear gray. When the cells' axons are myelinated, it actually gives it a white appearance. So the axons that are projecting out from these neurons in the mantle layer and the ventricular zone, as they project out and they become myelinated, that's what forms the white matter, which is most of these bundles of fibers of neurons that are projecting out from the developing spinal column. So you kind of see this butterfly shape. This is where the cells, most of the cell nuclei are found. And the white matter are the bundles and the neurons that are projecting out that are myelinated uh, from these regions. So this is what a, a fully developed human spinal column looks like. Now here's the dorsal region. 
here's the ventral region. In this ventral region is where you have most of your motor neurons. This is where you have your visceral motor, which innervate your organs and things of that sort. And then you have your somatic motor, which innervate your skeletal muscle system, where you get control of your you know, uh, uh, skeletal muscles. Over here in the ventral region is where you have the sensory neurons, where you sense things from your muscles and from your skin, and the vent visceral sensory neurons, which sense it from the internal organs that you have. Okay, so gray matter is un or, uh, unmyelinated nuclei of these axons. This is where most of your cell nuclei are found. Again, this is right near the lumen where your neural tube develops. This is where the ventricular zone is and the mantle zone is. Here is the marginal zone. These are where the axons are being projected outward from that synapsing with ganglia that we have and, uh, and being myelinated with these Schwann cells and other neural glia cells that form the white matter of your spinal column. And the same format occurs in your brain. You have gray matter where you, most of the nuclei are found, and you have white matter where you have more of the myelinated. Myelination not only protects the neurons, but it also speeds up the rate at which the neurons fire. This just illustrates how here's your spinal column. You've got all of these sensory neurons coming in and coming out. This is where you get these ganglia synapsing with your eyes and all of your organs and all of your sensory uh, perception, and they synapse with all of these, uh, all of this nerve tissue. 